What are some ways that we can develop self-compassion towards our current attachment? Yeah, this is such a huge, uh, I'm so glad that you brought that up. It's so true. We have such difficulty being self-compassionate. And oftentimes, you know that you have problems with self-compassion if you're pretty critical of other people. Like, because the rules come from somewhere. Like, so if you're upset with people for things, it's like, actually, there's a part of you that's upset with yourself, you know? And having compassion is so important. I think that one thing is moving past anger. I think that sometimes people will have a lot of anger either toward themselves for having an insecure attachment style now and like maybe the negative impacts it's had or like anger toward their parents. Like, I'm so mad at you because you made me do this or like you made me this way. And I get that that's oftentimes the first step. You have to have something to direct your upset at. But eventually you have to move past that and say, how can I honor myself and value myself just as I am? Because all human beings have worth regardless of our mistakes, regardless of what we've done, regardless of the mistakes in the past. And until you can achieve that self-compassion, you really can't move forward in a positive way because there's always going to be something that gets you stuck or sabotages your best efforts. So one of the things that I love the most about, um, you know, self-compassionate work is really just about like sitting with your inner child. So your inner child is that metaphorical little you that still lives in all of us. And you've probably seen your inner child come out when you're stressed and you just want to play video games forever or like do something that like makes you happy from childhood. Yeah. You're like, I don't care about any of my responsibilities. Or have a tantrum, kick, or scream, have a tantrum. and cry. Yeah. Exactly. And like, and, and if you can have compassion towards your inner child, then it's going to heal your adult self and give your adult self some compassion too. Oftentimes, I think as an adult, we push our inner child aside because we're like, no, like that's the tantrum like irresponsible little child. I don't want to recognize it. But if you don't, you're never going to have compassion for yourself. So one exercise I love to do is a visualization exercise where you essentially picture your, your inner child at whatever age you want to. It could be five, it could be three, it could be 10. Maybe going through a difficult time. Um, maybe you can just reflect upon like, what was a difficult moment during my elementary years or junior high years? And then just, you know, really bring that picture of your inner child to life as much as possible. And then imagine your adult self meeting your inner child and essentially asking your inner child, what do you need? Like just that simple question, what do you need? And then just listening and seeing what your inner child's telling you. Maybe your inner child is saying like, I just need a hug or like, I just needed to be told that I'm okay, even if I didn't get that A, you know, but whatever the case is, you know, really recognize that that's something that your inner child is still carrying with you and is probably affecting you to this day. And then thinking about in the next 24 hours, what's one small thing I can do to like meet this need of my inner child? Mm. So if they're saying like, I need to be told that I'm okay, even if I'm not achieving, it's like, okay, well, as the adult self, I have a lot more resources. I have a lot more wherewithal control over my life? Like, what is something that I can do to nurture that part of myself? And if you do this exercise even weekly, you're going to start to notice that you have so much more compassion for yourself because you're basically saying, hey, you're my inner child. You're allowed to come and express your emotions and your needs to me at any time. My adult self will help take care of it. And it gives you that bond of it's okay. Even if you're telling me something that like my adult self is saying, whoa, that sounds really childish or like really unreasonable. But the more that you actually dialogue with your inner child, the more you'll realize this is not unreasonable. This is something that a human being needs and I can give that to my own self. And that is compassion. That is a form of self-compassion that is very real and that you can take with you. Yeah. It's recognizing that that part of yourself that's still present from childhood is creating these patterns that are coming up in relationships, communication, the way you see the world and recognizing that hey, that operating system in that moment, I understand where it comes from. I understand how it gave you safety and security and love in that situation. It doesn't work in this moment. And I still care and love about and love you. I, I think that you're capable, even if you're feeling this way, even if that insecurity is at its peak. Exactly. And I think that that is so important because our inner child is still operating in our adult selves, like all the time, you know, and especially when we're stressed. And so if you're able to do this type of exercise, especially when you're stressed, you're basically saying, hey, it's okay. And it's kind of like every child that you've ever been around, they're like having a tantrum, but like you basically say, hey, I'm here or like, okay, let's do this. Like they calm down, right? It's like they only get louder if they don't feel like they're being heard. 
So if you can say, hey, I hear you, like that might even be enough. If you're like, hey, I don't have any great ideas of how I'm going to help you today, but at least I hear you and I accept what you're saying. That might be enough to get you through that next challenge. 